Welcome back to the My Online Schooling podcast, the place where we talk to staff, parents and pupils to find out more about life at the online school. In this episode, we're talking science. Lauren Galligan shows us how science works at an online school, what a typical science lesson looks like, how practicals are still possible, despite being online, and some of the resources available to make the lessons even more interesting, fun, and importantly, interactive. Now, fun fact, Lauren joined the school back in September 2018. So that means that with everything that's been happening in the world in 2020 and 2021, Lauren has solid experience of online schooling pre-pandemic, so she knows what she's talking about. But all that is coming up in this episode now. Sit tight while we step into this conversation with Lauren right now. Lauren, thank you for being here and welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. It's um, it's a rainy day today. We're, it's actually um, a Saturday, so um, not teaching today, but I'm planning on staying in the house. Um, so while it's raining, I don't really mind staying in the house so much because you don't feel like you're missing out on the sun um, mm-hmm. when it gets to the end of the day. If, if it's sunny and you're stuck inside, then it can feel like a wasted day. So I don't mind too much about the rain today. There's something quite nice about rainy days as well. If you know that you are going to be in, you can just sort of, you know, wrap up a little bit warmer if it is a cold day. Sometimes, of course, it's a warm day and it's raining. But you know that you're in and you're dry, and it's quite a, can be quite a cozy sort of feeling. Yeah, quite cozy. I, I do I do feel quite cozy today, and I think later on it'll be nice to sort of wrap up, put a nice film on, get some snacks out. <laughs> snacks and a movie. I like it. What sort yeah. of film might you go for? What's a good film on a Saturday afternoon? Oh, I like um, I like all Disney's. I watch them over and over. Okay, favorite Disney film? Oh, um, I'd say Beauty and the Beast. The mm-hmm more recent one the live action one with emma watson yes Mm -hmm. i love that one Mm -hmm. and um 101 dalmatians okay i love all of the toy stories as well yeah every disney film really big disney fan (laughs) yeah maybe we'll come back to that a little bit later in the episode lauren we're going to be talking about your involvement with my online schooling but first of all can you give us a little bit of background as to what your own education looked like where you went to school how school was for you and then what your first job was when you left school okay so um i grew up in a small town called ormskirk in lancashire in the northwest of england and um i went to primary school here and high school here and then i stayed on at the sixth form here Mm -hmm. as well okay my time in school was was fine i didn't have um, an unpleasant time in school but i was a very shy child and um yeah, I did. I did struggle a lot with the social side and, you know, even just having to say yes, miss in the register was absolutely terrifying for me. So I didn't particularly enjoy school, but it wasn't a horrible experience either. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed university a lot more. Okay. Um, I, Where did you go to? I went to University of Central Lancashire, which is in Preston. So I wanted to stay quite close to home because family is absolutely everything to me. Um, so I was only about 40 minutes away and I could still come back home at the weekend. And I had a part time job that I kept on for five years as I was through sixth form in university. And um, I did my undergrad in chemistry and then I stayed on to do my master's in chemistry as well. After that, I decided I really wanted to go into the nuclear industry um, oh. particularly looking at um, People have a very, well, in general, people have a very negative view of the nuclear industry and see it as dangerous. Um, And I wanted to um, work to show its benefits and make it safer and also work with the public so they could see the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. So I moved down um, to the Midlands and I lived in Warwick for a few years. And I started a PhD at the University of Birmingham in materials chemistry developing materials for um, cleaning up nuclear waste Hmm. and while you're doing the PhD you're not just researching you also have to do some teaching and just for like the first year students Mm -hmm. and I absolutely loved that I actually didn't think I would ever become a teacher and I think anyone that knew me from school especially considering how shy I am would be amazed to know that I'm a teacher now (laughs) yeah I was really surprised myself how much I enjoyed the teaching side of it So after a year, I decided that research isn't for me and I wanted to go into teaching. So I did my teacher training at the University of Warwick 
then, well, I spent time in two schools just for a short amount of time. So I've been in like your typical state school. And then I also was in an independent boys school, very different from each other. Mm. I then decided I wanted to move back home to be with family. And I knew that things were going to be a bit unsettled for a while. So I needed something that was more flexible. And that's um, how I ended up at Moss. And initially, that was September 2018. Mm -hmm. Initially, I thought it would be a short term thing. But um, even after a month or two, I knew that I'd want to be there for a long time. And I love it. I'm very proud to be part of the school. And what was your understanding of online schooling when you first heard about it as an option for teaching? I was a bit sceptical. I actually didn't realise it was an option until I came across the job advert. And I think when I was telling um, friends and family about it, they were also like, you know, a bit confused, like they'd never heard of it before. And even now, I love talking about my job (laughs) to Mm -hmm. anyone that asks. (laughs) Even now, some people are a bit unsure, but I'd say, you know, sort of in the past 12 months were with COVID and um, all schools having to go online to a certain extent, you know, people have a greater understanding of it now. It's interesting how something like COVID can change a lot of people's opinions on something like online schooling, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit then about how that looks in class regarding pupil engagement, because I believe you teach science. Is that right? I do. Yes. And um, I'd say pupil engagement is quite a challenge because obviously, you know, students can be sat in front of the computer for hours per day um, and it I can imagine it can be really tiring for them, just like it is for adults sitting in front of a computer all day, like in an office, for example. Mm. Um, But I'd say with science, if you were to ask a teenager, what is your favourite thing about science lessons? I think most of them would say it would be using, um, doing practicals, um, you know, getting the bunts and burners out, etc. And obviously we can't do that. So we just need to find different ways to keep students engaged. So we can use like simulators different YouTube videos. There are some practicals that students can do at home. But, you know, you have to think about safety and what equipment they can get hold of mm. as well. And just um, just a range of different activities like breakout groups so they can work in teams, using quizzes. Yeah, there are lots of different activities you can do to keep them engaged. Tell me a little bit then about some of those practicals that they can do in the house? I mean, clearly they, they, you can't have them setting up Bunsen burners. You've already told us that. But what, what can they do instead then? Um, well, for example, um, recently my year 11 chemistry students, we had to go at making bioplastics. Okay. So these are plastics that are made. We used um, cornstarch. So it's plant-based plastics, biodegradable. And that was really interesting. I think you um, everyone expected to get like this brilliant plastic that they Mm. could mould into a plastic bag or um, a bottle top or something. It doesn't always go perfectly. That was fun. It was nice to see some students come on the camera to show me actually making their bioplastics. And then the next week, once they had set, having a look at everyone's plastics. And, you know, that's fairly safe. You just need your kitchen, a few general baking ingredients. Yeah. And do you think that given that some of the the practical experiments can't be done in class, is there any drop, do you think, in the standard of education that children might receive based on the fact that they're not actually setting fire to something themselves? No. Um, and in fact, you know, in a GCSE exam, the the exam isn't, you know, you're not being tested on how you actually carry out the practical. The question is going to be asking you about maybe the safety the method, evaluating results. And I think when you're not actually doing the practical, yes, we could watch a video, do a simulator. Some teachers might have a little setup at home where they can actually do the demonstration themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, The students are paying more attention to those things that will be asked in the exam. So no, I don't think it's, I don't think it hinders their education at all. Very good to hear your, your point of view on that. Tell me then about your style of teaching. How do you go about teaching during a typical lesson? How does, how does it look? If I was a student in one of your classes, what would I expect to see? Um, well, I like to keep things very structured and I like routine. So um, <laughs> the students can expect to come in and they'll see the title, the unit. We'll then move on to lesson objectives and we'll have a little chat about what to expect in today's lesson. Mm-hmm. We'll have a starter activity and that's usually... Um, I like to make that either some sort of puzzle. 
So maybe like anagrams or a crossword or a little quiz or okay. something like a video that's going to put today's lesson into perspective in like a real world application. Hmm. And then we have a bit of teacher talk. I like to use breakouts where students can go and discuss questions as a team. They might do a task as a team, like create mind map, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a website called Kahoot. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Everyone have, loves yeah. Kahoot. It's yeah, great. so usually... Children um, and adults love, love, yeah. <laughs> love a bit of Kahoot, <laughs> Kahoot don't they? <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, yeah, usually we'll end up doing a Kahoot or something similar at the end. And usually when I start a lesson, the first question I get is, are we doing a Kahoot today? <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. But I don't have a particular style of teaching. I think in... Um, so the three schools I've been in are all very, very different. And I do think my style has been different in each school. Mm -hmm. But I'd say I'm quite a calm teacher. I like to create like a, a calm atmosphere where students can focus because a lot of the students are with us, you know, because in sort of the mainstream school, there are so many distractions. So I like to to create that sort of atmosphere. Mm. And you mentioned about mind maps and children working together in sort of smaller groups. How does that work online on Zoom? How does that actually come together? So um, on Zoom, you have a function to go into breakouts where everyone um, sort of splits off into their own sort of Zoom room. And then you mm -hmm. can use a range of different programs. So Zoom itself has a whiteboard function built okay. in so they can create it on that. Um, sometimes they use something called Jamboard, which um, okay. is a little bit more exciting because they can add images from the Internet. <laughs> Google Docs, um, Google Slides, there's actually loads of different things. And I, I just try to change it up. And then do they bring their work that they've put together back into the main classroom? Is that how it works? Yes. Yeah, so either they or I will take a screenshot of their work. Or if it's on a Google Doc that I can just screen share. And it's nice, you know, to come back to have each group show what they've managed to do. Some students will be uh, feeling confident enough to come onto the microphone and, and read it out. Hmm. But yeah, it's really, I like that because, you know, I think teaching it shouldn't all be about just the teacher talking for ages and ages. That's just really boring. The students won't take everything in. So it's nice for them to actually learn from each other and build off each other's ideas as well. So tell me then a little bit more about how you see the, the children develop. How do they go from the start of the academic year to the end of the academic year and go through any kind of transformation through the learning that they're receiving online compared to how they might have fared in a bricks and mortar kind of school? Um, I'd say I see a lot of students developing their confidence. A lot of students will contribute to lessons through the chat box rather than microphone, and that's perfectly fine. But even through the chat box, um, seeing their confidence and sort of um, in their own answers, so going from sort of giving the like one word answers like a yes or a no to actually giving more information, hmm. that's great. And how about well-being? For what children do you think that online schooling could be a good option for them? I think it's a fantastic option for students that have um, well-being or mental health challenges because um, there's so much flexibility in terms of timetable. The environment is much more suitable as well. So the typical classroom environment does not suit everyone. Me being one of those students, when I was in school, in the online classroom, you've not got the distractions, you don't have any bullying, you haven't got the busyness of the school environment. So it allows students to focus more on their learning um, and it also makes well-being and mental health challenges more manageable. Also, we've got the, um, the Learning and Wellbeing Hub, okay. which is a fantastic addition to the school. That's um, as well as having our live lessons, the school offers so many additional things as well, like the after school clubs and um, we've got the academic support clubs as well. But then the Learning and Wellbeing Hub is there and it can su pro provide support with um, anxiety, mm -hmm. which a lot of our students do have, um, social skills, as well as um, reading and writing skills. And then from a teaching point of view, tell me some of the benefits of working at my online schooling from your point of view? Um, so I already mentioned the flexibility, but if I develop that a little bit more. Um, so the fact that the students can still receive the high quality education, they can still get GCSEs and A-levels mm -hmm. while pursuing other activities and experiences. You know, th those activities and experiences can really build a sort of a well 
rounded childhood. So some of our students are budding actors or athletes. Mm. Um, some of them are traveling around the world and the fact that they can still get uh, such a high quality education and still access live lessons is fantastic. And you personally, what are some of the benefits that you experience? For me, I've received opportunities that, because I'm, I'm still a young teacher, I've received opportunities that I wouldn't receive for many, many years in your typical school. And I'm extremely grateful for that. In terms of the classroom, the benefits having the smaller classroom, so a um, maximum of 20 students per class, allows you to um, give more individual attention to each child. Um, and also, I mean, this is a benefit for me and the students. Mm -hmm. We've got students from all different backgrounds all around the world, and we all learn so much about um, different countries and different lifestyles. Um, mm. Mm. I just love the diversity that we have. And you enjoy hearing stories, I guess, then from some of the pupils that, who are from different countries around the world. Oh, yeah. I love it. Sometimes you can get a little bit distracted in a lesson. Mm. <laughs> sure. If a student mentions something and um, we can get a little bit distracted, but it's all, you know, it doesn't matter that we've got a little bit distracted from the lesson content. I think it's still learning. It's wonderful to find out about um, these different places. Mm. And since joining the school, did you say it was 2018 that you joined it? Yes, yeah, September 2018. So since joining back in September 2018, how have you seen the school change? How is it different now compared to how it was back then? Well, it's much, much bigger, not just in terms of pupils, teachers and staff, but we've also got um, a greater range of resources now. We've changed the learning platform that we use, also the online classroom that we use as well. Mm -hmm. The range of support that we can now offer as well. So we didn't have like the Learning and Wellbeing Hub the academic support groups yeah there's there has been a lot of a lot of change and I know it's it's just going to continue to grow and grow like I said when I first joined not many people knew about online schools and were quite skeptical but I think now it's growing like crazy really interesting okay so Lauren thank you for answering some of those questions about school I've got a couple of quick questions for you now tell me about some of the things that happen in your local part of the world um, in Lancashire what sort of things do you enjoy doing when you're not teaching with my online schooling? Um, so I actually prefer to spend my time indoors rather than outdoors. Um, I do enjoy going for walks locally. Um, the Lake District and Wales are pretty close by, so I do like to go there every so often. Mm -hmm. But in my free time, I do prefer to stay inside or within my garden. So I'm quite into gardening at the moment. Okay. I'm really into crafts as well. So at the moment I'm doing, uh, I'm making mosaics and okay. I'm making, um, I'm doing some embroidery. And I also really like gaming as well, which I know some of my students already know because they like to ask me about gaming and get me a little bit off track in lessons. <laughs> 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 and um, my students will already know as well, my cats. I absolutely love animals. How many cats do you have? I've got two now. Um, I was fostering dogs as well, dogs that came over from Romania. So I was fostering them until they found a permanent home here. But I've taken a little break from that um, and I'll take it up again um, in the summer. Looking further around the world, even though you say you like to stay in, if you could visit any country in the world, ignoring any kind of current COVID restrictions, which country might you choose? I've already been here, but it's my absolute favourite, Barcelona. Okay, right. Yeah, I plan to go back there as soon as I can. I love the art, um, Gaudi's work. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. But somewhere that I haven't been, um, I really want to go to Iceland to see the Northern Lights. Oh, yeah. And Iceland's not that far away, really, either, is it? Relatively no, easy if, to get if I to. go on holiday, it needs to be quite local. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the furthest I've been is Thailand. Okay, well, Thailand is quite far, though, to be fair. It is, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we need to bring this to an end in a minute, but for anyone who's heard anything and might want to get in touch, what's the best way for them to connect with My Online Schooling? If they go to the school website, which is www.myonlineschooling.co.uk, there are different options on there. We can get in touch with the admissions team and you can find out. There's, there's so much information on the website, so I'd say that's a good starting point. 
Great. Well, look, Lauren, thank you for your time. It's been really good talking to you about your connection with the school, how you teach at the school and how you feel that benefits some of the pupils in your class as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I've really enjoyed talking to you. So that was Lauren Galligan on all things science at My Online Schooling. It's amazing, isn't it? Hearing how things like this are not just a possible way to learn, but actually a really effective way to learn. Lauren, thank you for sharing everything with us today. We really appreciate your time. Now, if you're listening to this and you'd like to know more about science at an online school, then just search for My Online Schooling on Google and you'll find the website straight away. And also, while you're doing that, don't forget to follow this podcast channel because then when each episode is released, you get a small notification just to let you know that it's available. So go and do that. But in the meantime, thank you for listening to this episode as always, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.